Okay, we're back with Cromwell's victory at the Battle of Marston Moor. It is game turn three, which is five o'clock in the evening. There are no visibility checks. Okay, it is step two, the Allied rally phase. We have a few up to the out to the west. We'll have to rally this unit or attempt to. Uh, and there's a couple more down the line, but we're going to go ahead and attempt to rally this unit. It has a morale of a four, and Cromwell is adjacent, so it gets to add its three, which will be seven, so that will be an automatic rally. Don't even have to roll for it. So this unit is uh, in good order again. And let's see where else we're at here. We have another unit down here. Second uh, Crawford, maybe I'm not sure. He is not. He is not close to any leader on his side, or of the same color. So he will have to roll a two or less to rally. He rolls a two, so he will rally. And um, disorder a lot of units behind him. I can't remember where I keep putting these guys. I'm not quite sure where he was now. I'm not quite sure where he was now. Oh well, that's just how it goes. These guys, I believe, are in the these hexes. Oh, he was over here adjacent, so I know he was hit by cannon fire or something or adjacent. Um, I could go back and look. I was just there, but. Call it good for now. I'll go back and correct any kind of major mistake, I suppose. <clears throat> Alright, anyway, back to the dawdling unit. There is, he's not next to a leader, so he will roll straight up uh, two or less. He rolls a three, so he remains disordered. And I don't see any other allied units that need to rally. So I think that's good for the Allied Rally phase. Well, I made a slight error during the Allied Rally phase. You may not attempt to rally a unit which is adjacent to an enemy unit. So I will have to go back and disorder the units which you just rallied. Okay, after I made the rally corrections, basically no Allied units rallied. So we will go on with the Allied Artillery phase. It looks like all Allied Artillery is masked, masked by its own units. I made an, uh, <clears throat> an error in the line of sight rules. Surprise, surprise. When I stated that a unit can fire at a target unit that is more than half the distance from the firing unit, this is not true. It may fire at the target unit if the line of sight blocking effect is closer to the firing unit. Um, or vice versa. How do I want to say that? Basically, if the range is more than half, uh, more than half to the target hex, the line of sight is blocked in those hexes that are greater than half of the range, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. In other words, if this unit were trying to fire on Newcastle, and let's say there was a line of sight, then one, two, three, four, five, he is greater than half the range to Newcastle, and the LOS rule states that artillery pieces and hilltop hexes that are firing into a non-hilltop hex ignore blocking hexes that are more than half the total distance in hexes from the hex occupied by the target unit. That's well, I think I understand uh, artillery and blocking hexes. 
Uh, and uh, from hilltop to non-hilltop. So basically, if I use this artillery here, and I wanted to fire over here on Levinson, I'm going to be going one, two, three, four, five. Basically, if there's a block, blocked hex or unblocked hex, you use the unblocked hex, but let's just say that Levinson, or not Levinson, but 7th, 7th, let's just say that the 2nd Crawford is in the way. The rule states that, as I said before, that if the blocking terrain is more than half the distance to the target unit, then it is not blocking terrain. Um, so it has to be closer to the firing unit before it can be considered blocking terrain. So these units could fire over him into Levinson and pretty much the same or even into Newcastle, well they can't go through the town, or into Newcastle, or fire into the Newcastle unit. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just back up, correct a mistake. So we're going to have two artillery shots. One to Levinson and one, two to Levinson. Both ranges, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, no, nothing else going on there, so two shots at five. Basically, you got to roll a one or a two. First one's a three. The second one is a two. So we get a disruption on uh, Levinson. He's already disrupted, so that's basically a no effect. Well, anyway, that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on there. Uh, all in all, everything else uh, is pretty much the same as we were. So I guess we have done the Allied Rally, the Allied Artillery. Now we will do the Allied March Phase. All right, it's going to be the Allied March Phase. Um, we're looking at the west side of the board now. I know the units are upside down, but uh, just have to live with that, I suppose. Units exert zones and controls, but zones and controls are usually just for combat purposes. You have to attack units in your zones control. Otherwise, they have no effect on movement. So, let's see. <clears throat> How do I want to do this? I'm going to take uh, Norwich here, horse, across the stream for three, and that's four, and that's five, and that's six, and that's going to be as far as he can go at the moment. Um, I want to kind of keep the units together, but at the same time, I think I'm going to bring Frazier's lighter cavalry around. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And he only has a six. Leslie, one, two. Uh, Kerr. Not sure how to pronounce his name. Um, he's going to move here. He has six movement points. I'm sure he can make it. Two, three, four, and I think one, two, three, four. We're gonna go ahead and keep the lighter cavalry there on the flank while we move uh, the heavier cavalry up that is currently on the flank, or at least try to make a break through there. This unit's disrupted and can't do anything, and this unit up here is also disrupted. Um. I hesitate to move these guys through there only because I have nobody to back backfill now that I've moved my cavalry. So we may just go to just straight on attacking and see what happens. I may pull back some of my disrupted units, but again, I don't have anything to backfill them with. So, that's pretty much an error on my part. I can see that right now. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue moving units on down the line. I may come back and uh, reposition a few units down here. The rules say that if you take your hand away from the unit, you're done moving that unit. So, go figure. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do here and I'll be back. Okay, we're going to start off the Allied Combat Phase. I'm going to work my way... What is it? West to East. Um, let's see. Must attack units in which you have a friendly, non-disordered unit in a, an enemy zone of control. And non and disordered units do not exert zones of control. So up here... We're going to have Frasier and Norwich attack uh, Molyneux, or I'm guessing it's Molyneux. Um, both of these will be had because they're attacking across this stream. So, do I want those or do I also want Leslie in there and allow Cromwell to attack Yuri? I think, well, no, because Leslie's going to have to attack him. So we're going to attack this unit, so we're looking at uh, 3.5 is going to be 4, and 4 and 2 is going to be 6, so we're looking at 6 to 2. So, we'll be rolling on the 6 to 2, there are no terrain benefits, this will be in clear. And what did I just say? Uh, uh, 6 to 2, 3 to 1, that's it. We roll a one. That can't be good for the defender. That's a defender dis uh, disorder. Okay, now Leslie is going to attack uh, Tuke. Tuke. I don't know what his uh, uh, official designation is, but that's what it is for here. Four to two. It's going to be two to one. In clear. <laughs> Roll the two. That's going to be a disruption. Defender disrupted. Well, it looks like uh, Cromwell Horse and such are going according to history to a small degree. Alright, nobody else has to attack, but Cromwell is going to attack Yuri. And he's going to be three and seven. In clear terrain, so that's going to be 10, 5 to 1. 10 to 2 is going to be 5 to 1. Now, watch, I find out that I can't attack disrupted units or disordered units. So, 5 to 1 in the clear. Cromwell versus Yuri. Roll to 6, and that's not good. That's a defender exchange. Um, this must be where Cromwell gets uh, shot in the neck or whatever, or hit in the neck. Wounded in the neck. So, although that actually I think occurred before the actual, well, before seven. Anyway, we have what? We have a defend disruption exchange. We have to disorder at least three. Well, there's no doubt about it that we're going to have to disorder the Cromwell horse. But at least it's not eliminated. Pardon me here. It'd be fairly easy to rally him next turn, but he's probably going to be adjacent to an enemy unit, so he may have to back off a bit. All right, where else are we? Um, Vimden, Vimden, whatever his name is. This horse. We also have the Fleetwood horse. I think we're both going to attack. First Napier with that. Or wait a minute. What was I going to do? Actually, Fleetwood or whatever is going to attack the first Napier unit. Seven to two. Actually, he's disrupted. He could charge it. But if you charge, then you're putting yourself immediately, uh, you're going to immediately disrupt yourself. Do I want to do that? I don't see why not. I might uh, get to eliminate the unit. So we're going to go ahead and charge, which doubles 
You can only charge uh, with heavy cavalry against disordered foot. And that's the case here, in which case you're doubled. So he's a 17 to 2 or 7 to 1 in the clear. And it only goes up to 6 to 1. So we're going to be on a 6 to 1 table. Roll the 2. That's a defender eliminated. And that was Fleetwood versus first Napier. Napier or whatever. Uh, no advance after combat. No, no advance after combat. I'll double check that, but I don't think there is. Okay, so Fleetwood uh, eliminated him. Now we are going to, what are we going to do? I guess these two units, well this unit will charge that foot, thus having the exact same, well I guess I gotta just sort of Fleetwood too, sorry. Because of the charge. Okay, um, we're gonna charge Napier here, 14 to two is gonna be seven to one or six to one in this case. It is a foot and it is disordered. We get another disorder which eliminates the foot. Second Napier is gone. Uh, pretty much just uh, crushed them. However, he. Sorry for the hand. Jeez. And you can charge out of uh, the swamp. I better double check that. Out of a marsh. H. Yeah, that would have been halved attacking out of the marsh. So instead of, I don't even think, uh, well, I'm going to take that back because I don't want him to be halved or disrupted if that's how that's going to be. <clears throat> see if I can put this unit back to kind of where it was. So that would be 7 to 2 would be what? Two, four, six, three to one. I think I'd rather attack him at three to one than uh, have him automatically disrupted. Three to one. Six is no effect. I guess we'll take that. All right. So he can't attack because he's uh whatever. This foot. is going to attack Levison's heavy cavalry. I think that would probably be the best thing there or else... Uh, Levison, 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 Levison. Yeah, I think we'll, uh, because I'm going to have to attack Newcastle with Bright. I should... I don't have a choice here, so he has to. So, um, this foot doesn't have to attack either of those two, as a matter of fact. But only Bright, Bright would have to attack him, what, five to six, one to two? Well, let's do a one to two, I guess. Bright versus Newcastle. That's. That's that's probably a nothing. Where are we at? Just outside that town, so we're in the clear. Clear at one to two, and I rolled a two. It's a no effect. So got away with that one. And I don't think I don't even know if you saw that one. Apologize if you didn't. Yeah, see. Um I don't think there's any other combats. Nobody else on either side is adjacent to an enemy unit that exerts a zone of control, so that, I think, is going to be it for the Allied player's turn. I'll be back for the, um, that is going to be the Royalist player's turn. Okay, this is turn three. This will be the Royalist's player turn. First thing we have is visibility phase. Visibility is fine. We do not begin to roll for visibility until turn seven. <clears throat> And now we'll do the rally phase. All units not adjacent to enemy units must attempt to rally. Stacked with a leader, you add the leader's bonus. 
adjacent. I think you get the leisure bonus as well. Up to, so let's see, command rating. Same force for Jason. Okay, so, oh, uh, die. <clears throat> let's go down here, try to stay in focus and everything this turn. Stay on focus. All right, he is adjacent to enemy units, so he may not rally. This unit is also adjacent to enemy units and may not rally. However, Tinsley, or whatever his name is, may attempt to rally. He's also by Byron with a 1 command rating, so he gets uh, he has a 50% chance, 3 or less. For all of 6, he remains disordered. This unit, I guess better start moving up. Need a camera crew. Um, heck am I? He uh, failed, even with his bonus. He's adjacent to enemy units and cannot rally. He is also adjacent to enemy units and may not attempt to rally. Other than that, I do not think there are any other Royalist units that are disrupted that must, sorry, must attempt to rally. So, we are going to go to the movement phase for the uh, Royalist player. Uh, actually, it's the artillery phase. I'll figure this out eventually. Okay, I'm going to pause right here. Okay, here we are for the Royalist artillery phase. You know, the um, simplicity, the complexity of this game is in relationship to its simplicity. Um, it's simple and yet complex for me. Onwards. Um, this Royalist artillery here will attack this Parliament foot here. I'm not even going to try and uh, guess what the abbreviations mean. What are we looking at? Two hex range. We're looking at a two hex range. 50% chance. We score two. Disrupted. So. He's disrupted. Ah. Okay, we're going to go with this artillery unit here. And it's going to fire at Hamilton, I guess, at a two hex range. Three, it also disrupts. So I wonder if you shouldn't just charge the guns. I wonder if I shouldn't quit hitting that lamp. And then uh, this Royalist artillery, I guess, will fire on Ray. Re. Ray at uh, two hex range, and he disrupts him. Looks like the uh, foot in the center, um, Levin's foot, Scotsman, is getting uh, getting fairly uh, disrupted, I guess. And we'll go ahead and go against uh, this artillery versus Kopar. And it's a six, which is a miss, so he locks out. Other than that, I think, other than that, I think that is all of the Royalist artillery that uh, we have at the moment. Okay, up in the west, to the top of the screen, I have pulled back some of the Royalist horse. I have moved Rupert and his uh, reserve units up try to plug the gaps as well as place them in positions where they can aid in rallying uh, their disordered units if they get a chance next turn I need to see if disordered units can move adjacent to non disordered units well I'll check that later anyway they have pulled back a little bit and are hoping to get it uh, into a position where they can recover. In the center I started to move some of the foot across uh, the ditch to engage the par uh, parliamentarian foot. The cannon, uh, our cannon fire disrupted several 
parliamentarian units, so we are moving across the ditch with some of our units <clears throat> to engage those dis disordered units and hopefully destroy them or at least force them to continue to retreat to the rear. Uh, I think that's kind of about it for the March phases for the Royalist player. I'm going to resolve some combat up along the lines and stuff and we'll see where we're at. There probably won't be much going on up north or to the west but uh, we have some down here we have some quite a few there in the middle so I'm going to go ahead and resolve those and come back and see what happened. Action at the end of the Royalist combat phase. Things got a little messy in the middle. Um, there were disruptions on both sides as the Royalists pushed their attack. We have over here in the three turns that I played so far we've had three <clears throat> Three Royalist units and three Parliamentarian units destroyed so far. And like I say, the middle, middle just uh, is pretty much a mess at the moment. Uh, let's see here. There, get back in focus. Um, well, like I said, it was just kind of a bloodbath in the middle. A lot of disruptions, several eliminations. Um, anyway, it's going to be a mess, and with uh, units adjacent to enemy, disrupted units adjacent to enemy units, um, it's going to be quite a struggle to get uh, <clears throat> units back into fighting shape. I don't know, I don't think I mentioned it, but up north, when I brought in Rupert and some of his men in the reserves, I tried to put them... <clears throat> together rally them around Rupert and uh, Byron up there to hopefully get some a chance to have a better chance of rallying but I'm afraid that the pro, pro I don't call them Protestants that the parliamentarians will rally and move first and thus uh, enter their move adjacent to them preventing them from rallying I was going to move the royalists up against them however they would not be able to rally themselves. So anyway, this is the situation at the end of game turn three. Next turn will be game turn four, 530 turn. See ya.